So what we're going to try to talk about today is the arithmetic of dynamical sequences. Let's do an example. So here's a, an example maybe you'll recognize. Let's let f of x be the function, 2x plus 1. And what I mean by iterating something under this function is let's start at a point, say, x equals 0. When we plug x equals 0 into this function, we get 1. And then let's keep doing that. So when we plug 1 into the function, we get 2 plus 1, which is 3. When we plug 3 into the function, we get 6 plus 1, which is 7. So you look at the last number, so 15, 31. So maybe I'll do two more just for a demonstration here. So 62 plus 1, that's 63. And 126 plus 1, it's 127. So this sequence is special. So this sequence, you might recognize that each of these numbers in the sequence are off from a power of 2 by exactly 1. So this is known as the Mersenne sequence. Well, people have heard the, of the Mersenne sequence because this is a famous question that we don't know how to answer is, are there infinitely many prime numbers in this sequence? Since this question is so hard, one easier question we could ask would be, what do the prime divisors of each element of this sequence look like? That seems like a harder question. <laughs> well, it might be a harder question depending on how specific you want to get. But so what I mean by the prime divisors of elements of the sequence is we have these factors. So each number factors into prime numbers as long as we're ignoring 0 here. So 3 is already prime. 7 is already prime. But 15, this is 3 times 5. 31, that's already prime. 63, well, let's see. So 7 is a prime divisor, and 9 is a divisor, but it's not prime. It's actually 3 times 3 times 7. And 127, uh, let's see. I think that's prime, <laughs> and so on. Anyway, so this is what I mean by prime divisors. And so instead of asking, OK, do we have infinitely many elements in this sequence which are prime, we could at least ask, as we go along in the sequence, do we get a new prime at each step? So that's the question I'm interested in answering. So here, OK, we don't have any prime divisors. But here, 3 is a prime divisor that never appeared before. Here, 7 is a prime divisor that never appeared before. Here, 5 never appeared. 31 never appeared. But here, we run into a problem. We broke the streak. No new primes. And is that bad? Well, depends on what you're interested in. <laughs> but if the question is, do we always have a new prime divisor for the Mersenne sequence, the answer is no, because look at the sixth element doesn't have a new prime divisor. But the interesting fact is, after that, all Mersenne numbers have a new prime divisor. Every single one? Every single one. What, what happened with 63? Well, it's just. When you're at the beginning of a sequence, the numbers are so close and there's so many primes happening that it can occur that you sort of fail to have this new prime divisor. And it also matters that this was the sixth element of the sequence, but that's a little bit complicated. So the point is that after that, after that sixth element of the sequence, after 63, we always have the new prime divisors. So this is an interesting thing. And I think the next natural question, once you notice that a sequence like this has some interesting property, is What's special about this sequence? What other sequences have this property? So instead of choosing a function like 2x plus 1 to generate my sequence, what if I chose a nonlinear function? So if I had an x squared in there. So let's say I chose x squared plus 1. But we can still start generating these sequences. So if we start with 0, if we plug it into this function, it's going to map to 1 again. But when we plug 1 in, we get 1 plus 1, which is 2. When we plug 2 in, we have 2 squared plus 1, which is 5. We plug 5 in, we have 25 plus 1, which is 26. And when we plug 26 in, I happen to know we end up with 677. So because I'm dealing with an x squared instead of an x here, the sequence gets larger much faster. But still, we get this sequence of integers. Still, we can ask, when do we start getting new prime divisors? So if we look at what we have here, so notice again, 2 and 5 are already prime. 26 is 2 times 13. And 677 is also prime. And it turns out that for this sequence, it's even better than Mersenne sequence. All numbers after 2 
have a new prime divisor. So this is proven that after two, you always get a new prime divisor in this particular sequence. You showed me an amazing sequence, then you showed me a more <laughs> amazing sequence. Okay, well then get ready. <laughs> so let's do the same thing, except that there's no reason that we're only talking about positive integers here, right? So let's look instead at something like this and see what happens. So again, we start with 0. 0 maps to negative 1. Negative 1 maps to 1 squared minus 1, which is 0. But we already know where 0 maps. 0 maps to negative 1. And so the sequence we get is completely not interesting. I think that's cool. <laughs> How can you say that's not interesting? Well, it's definitely not going to have this property that we have new prime divisors, at least. So this is bad news. Right? As far as this question is concerned, this is a weird sequence. So let's, let's try a different negative number. Mm. Let's try, I don't want to try minus 2, and maybe you can try it and find out why. <laughs> let's try instead minus 3. All right, so let's go. So 0 and 0 maps to 0 minus 3. Minus 3 maps to 9 minus 3, which is 6. 6 maps to 36 minus 3. 33. 33 maps to something messy that I don't want to calculate. But now we'll get an infinite sequence again instead of having this, this repetition like we had in the minus 1 case. Yep. We'll get an infinite sequence and again the sequence will have new prime divisors at each Every point time. in the sequence. Every time. I'm beginning to think this isn't such a special thing anymore. I know. So <laughs> Let me tell you, you're sort of right. So here I'll write down a general fact. If, say, c is an integer, so a whole number or the negative of a whole number, and c is not 0, minus 1, or minus 2, mostly because we want to avoid this problem, then every element of the sequence that's generated from x squared plus c has new prime divisor. So the only exceptions are 0, minus 1, Minus two. This works for x squared, but it works for x squared plus an integer. If you wanted, you could ask this for a fraction c instead of a whole number c. So if c was 1 half, let's say. So if f of x is x squared plus 1 half, well then what starts happening? So 0 maps to 1 half. Now the computation is a little less pleasant, but 1 half is 1 fourth plus 1 half, which is 3 fourths. 3 fourths, when we put it into this function, we have 9 over 16 plus 1 half, which I guess is 17 over 16. Does that sound right? And so on. So even though we're getting these fractions in the sequence, the denominators are just powers of 2. And so when you try and factor them, the only prime that you get there is 2. So we can still ask the same question about the numerators in the sequence. So we're just going to ignore the denominators. Just ignore the denominators. There's not interesting stuff there ha happening there anyways. So if you ignore the denominators, then we look and we have this sequence 0, 1, 3, 17, and so on. And it turns out that again, you will have this property. So it seems sort of fundamental. And part of the reason why is because I've been hiding an example from you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so maybe one last example of computation that I'll show you is this kind of tricky little thing here. x squared minus 7 over 4. So what does 0 map to? 0 maps to minus 7 over 4, 21 over 16, minus 7 over 16 squared. All of a sudden everything comes to a stop because look at our numerators. 0, 7, 7 times 3, so 3 is a new prime divisor there, but here we don't have a new prime divisor. So there's something different between 1 half and minus 7 fourths. For some reason, there's an element in this sequence where the numerator doesn't have a new prime divisor. And this is the, is this the, only, this is the only number, the only fraction that throws the spanner in the works? We don't know. We don't know. So just to give you a hint of why this is true, so this is the only one that we know of. <laughs> but we don't know if it's the only time it can possibly happen. So what's really going on behind the scenes here has something to do with a particular set of numbers known as the Mandelbrot set, which I won't go into, but it's this interesting fractal where things go kind of crazy, and it's hard to draw a fractal, so I'll just do my best. Not bad, <laughs> not bad, not bad effort. Thank you. <laughs> so let me 
puts this into perspective for you. So this is a picture of the complex numbers. And I'm interested in the numbers that are inside of this set. And let's look at the values of C that we've done this computation for. So 1, we first did x squared plus 1. 1 is over here. We also did minus 1. Minus 1 is over here. We did minus 3, which is well outside of this set. We did 1 half, which is also not inside this set. But minus 7 over 4, it is inside of this set. So minus 7 over 4, it turns out, is right inside this piece of the Mandelbrot set. This, this line mm -hmm. of, the real, of the real numbers there That's right. seems to run right through a, a whole swathe of fractions that would be. Is that, aren't there going to be loads of fractions that are going to cause this problem then? That's a really good point. So you're absolutely right. There's, there's tons and tons of fractions on the real line inside of the Mandelbrot set, but it's not enough, it turns out, to just be inside the Mandelbrot set. You have to be particularly very far inside of the Mandelbrot set. And so this is really saying something special about where the number C can lie inside of the Mandelbrot set. So if there are other numbers like minus 7 over 4 that are going to throw a spanner in our works, mm -hmm. they definitely have to be in here. That's right. So right away, you get for free that if you take a large enough fraction, say bigger than 1, for example, although you could get closer, for free you get that there will always be new primes in those sequences. But yeah, if we were to look for other examples of where this might occur, they would have to lie inside of the Mandelbrot set, and they would have to lie well inside the Mandelbrot set, actually, it turns out. But it looks like there are numbers here that would be pretty well inside the Mandelbrot set, or is it a particular... Like it's a particular thing. Inside each of these bulbs here that I've drawn sort of <laughs> half-heartedly, half there's a special point. And what might happen, the only reason why this might happen is if your rational number is very, very close to that special point in a, in a technical way that is, is hard to formulate. <laughs> I think at heart people don't believe that there's one beyond minus 7 over 4. So if I had to make a guess, I would say probably not. But it would certainly be nice to know that for sure.